All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. City of Clear Lake Shores City Council regular meeting, January 4th, 2022, at 6:30. Uh, do have a quorum with all council members present. Item number two is pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and Texas flag. Mm -hmm. Number three, reports from council. Councilman Steve Wardis. Well, first of all, uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, I think we hope we had a good Christmas and uh, New Year's holiday. I appreciate all the uh, beautiful decorations we had throughout the city during the holiday season. They were very, very nice. I would like to mention one thing. Um, the speeding seems to be picking up again on Birch Road. I only mentioned that, I noticed that last week I was installing, re doing a, a replacement of my mailbox and post. And several vehicles, uh, just my judgment, were going substantially faster than the 20, more like 25 to 28 miles an hour. And I just wanted to make mention of it. Um, I don't know what it's gonna take to stop these speeders. I hate to see a speed bump installed. Um, perhaps doubling the speeding fine uh, should be considered. I'm not sure what, but we've got to do something to help curb this before somebody gets injured. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Orris. Councilman Rick Fisher. Yep, just, uh, welcome back, everybody. Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a great holiday. Uh, nothing to report uh, with the uh, pool since uh, with the cold weather. Nobody's doing a lot of swimming right now. <laughs> that's very <laughs> true. Thank you, Mr. Fisher and Councilwoman Monica Lede. I guess I will echo everybody's sentiments about um, welcome back, and I'm very upset that nobody took my advice to leave the tree up. I think it should stay <laughs> as a personal decorator, but anyway. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that Amy Hoff has her um, event at the Bayou City Shelter this weekend. Um, it's on Saturday from 12 to 4. There will be adoptions, um, low-cost vaccinations, discounted microchipping if your pets aren't microchipped. Definitely a great time to take advantage of it um, and all kinds of good stuff. And that's it. All right. Thanks, Mr. Day. Councilman Alex Scanlon. Happy New Year, all. I don't have any specific report, but looking forward to uh, 2022. It's a good year for everybody and better than, better than last. All right. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon and Councilman Randy Cronister. I have nothing to report at this time. All right, thank you, Mr. Conister. Uh Just a couple items. Welcome to 2022. 2021 was a long one, and uh, then it went by quick. I uh, hope everybody had a great holiday and happy new year, and I uh, hope everybody was able to spend some good time with family and friends. I know a lot of activities were going on, on the island, and I'm glad everybody was safe from what everything I've seen. As you also know, the uh, Omicron is up and coming with the COVID, and so everybody just remains safe and vigilant with the uh, with that, and practice uh, safe distancing. And you know, you're looking at us, we're all close, but um, everybody has their own choices, and 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 make those as appropriate. So just want to make everybody aware of that. Uh, next is uh, staff reports, item four, Police Department, Chief Keel. Good afternoon, uh, council and citizens. Uh, the stats for the month of December. <coughs> Clear Lake Shores Police Department conducted 265 traffic contacts, made one arrest for DWI. We had five narcotics offenses, one burglary of a motor vehicle, one assault, four thefts, made 34 arrests, including warrant arrests, assisted other agencies on four occasions, 29 residential checks and 488 business checks. Uh, circling back to the narcotics offenses, the month of December, officers from the Clear Lake Shores Police Department seized 20 grams of marijuana, 45 grams of methamphetamines, 1.6 grams of crack cocaine, 5.5 grams of heroin, 14.8 uh, grams of prescription pills, 
some syringes and digital scales. Um, that seems to be an uptick, and uh, we're seeing quite a bit more. And as you're aware, the, uh, drug users, drug sellers don't don't really consider city limit signs. So what happens in Baycliffe or Kima or League City or Dickinson filters over into us. But the uh, the officers have been pretty diligent in making traffic stops, and and uh, fr from those traffic stops, that's where these drugs have been located so uh, I'm proud of their efforts and uh, I look to try to see if we can't curb some of that thank you thank you chief all right next is uh, building official Kevin Harrell thank you Mayor Council Thank you, Mr. Harrell. All right, next is uh, Clear Lake Shores Kima Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, Chief Rob Saniga is not present. And then Galveston County Health District, Amy Weber. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, for the month of November, we're one month behind because we're in the middle of the month now. So uh, for the month of November, we ran 51 calls, four of them Clear Lake Shores. Um, we did do some mutual aid giving to the family on Baycliff and League City, and we did receive a few mutual aids to them. Um, our average response time has come down uh, from 5.15 to 4.54. Awesome. Thanks, Ms. Weber. Next is uh, City Administrator Brent Spear. Thank you, and welcome. Another one coming to maybe a little bit Last more. Texas autumn, and uh, this meeting we talk about Texas winter. Uh, as far as um, important milestones, grant uh, to review the 95% drawings for that project. That is uh, part of the grant process, and we'll submit those back for revisions hopefully this week. Also, at Shell Bottom, had a report of pothole at the end of the uh, boat ramp, and we will get that filled in. Uh, we don't have a backhoe right now because we had to pick a time of year to send that off to be refurbished. So it's currently having that work done. Also related to parks, uh, Lowell Brown Fishing Pier is open for um, use later this week. We're just uh, we're holding off. We've been watering it a lot, trying to get that sod to seed, and we don't want uh, someone to slide. It's kind of slick right now. So it's worth to try out. Daniel Drawer Avenue, if you've had an opportunity to drive Hanson uh, Road behind uh, Home Depot, you'll see that there's a lot of activity there. That's actually a Galveston County project, and they have almost one complete lane uh, completed, and uh, that is uh, reinforced concrete. So I to get that completed uh, in a timely manner. Look for that to complete this spring. issues and this time of year is a time where we work on uh, lists of projects so we submitted a list to TxDOT of potential consideration projects doesn't mean they're going to take them on however uh, we submitted those um, they involve 2094 which is under their control and then have been working on submission of action worksheets or MOUT what are part of the hazard mitigation plan for the county and that's what is referenced by FEMA if we uh, experience a tsunami or land subsidence and they go to see what we said we could do so we've been working on that and getting those submitted in a timely manner and that is in conjunction like I said with the Galveston County. Echoes refurbished. Uh, let's see. Don't have anything to report with the weather. We covered that and the rest 
we'll take care of further on the agenda. Any questions? Uh, just something on the uh, water flooding mitigation. If, if Adri, if you could put something out there. I think Galveston County did a request to the residents of the county that they could go in there and do a survey monkey thing. Huh? Yeah, we can get that put up. They send it to me and I send it to Adri. So. Yeah, we can just repu republish it yeah. for our residents. Thanks. All right, thanks, Mr. Spear. Uh, next is item six. Nope, sorry. Uh, five, jumping the gun here. Uh, public comments. Uh, at this time, any person with city-related business may speak to the city council. Topic of discussion must be consistent with an item listed on the agenda. In compliance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, City Council may not deliberate. Comments from the public should be limited to a maximum of three minutes per individual. Anybody like to address the council? Having none, item six. Is there any object items that need to be pulled by council on the consent agenda? Having none, is there any objection to the consent agenda? Items A through D. Having none, the consent agenda is accepted. Item number seven, new business discussion. Possible action may be taken on the following items. Item A, appoint Judge Richard Cope as associate judge, and this is per request from Judge Dick Gregg. Bless you. As stated, uh, Judge Gregg had requested uh, Cope, who was a prior municipal judge for City of Clear Lake, Georgia. Associate judge in the event that he got town can sit in. He's familiar with uh, the process. Yes. All right, well, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Judge Richard Cope as the associate judge for uh, Philly Shores. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Ms. Lede. Any discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. Having none, motion passed. Item B, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Clear Lake Shores, Texas, authorizing the mayor to execute the First Amendment to that certain lease made by and between the City of Clear Lake Shores, Texas, and Miss Edna Suzanne Lee on August 10, 2017. Brent, do you have some words? Just a few words. Uh, Is there a microphone? Hold on a second. Is there a microphone on over there, or make sure that other one's turned off, please? Let's try this. There you All go. right. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. The uh, yes. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lauren Smith with Olson and Olson is here tonight in attendance for any specific questions. But basically, uh, what this allows is for the mayor to enter, enter into an agreement uh, amendment on the lease purchase agreement for what we call East Parking Lot, also formerly known as the Lee Lot. Um, and that is the first step of kind of a multi step process of um, assisting a business in that area in town center. So. Um, don't I believe that everything's been worked through with uh, Mrs. Lee through her attorney? Their uh, those uh, their their questions have been answered. Uh, their biggest concerns were twofold. One was that uh, in the event that the city would default on said agreement, they wouldn't be left with either structures or people to deal with um, up there. And uh, the second thing was to limit the number of licenses that could be engaged by the city, that they wanted this to be uh, one opportunity. You know, we don't anticipate needing any more in the future. This is a special, very special use and consideration. But if we ne would need more, then we'd have to return for another amendment. Correct. All right. I'm 
make a motion that we that we allow the mayor to execute the First Amendment to the lease. I'll second. With less words this time, uh, kind of ditto. This is the uh, the licensing agreement uh, that would allow uh, uh, for a portion of that parking lot to be utilized for parking in an ADA compliant ramp for Galveston Bay Brewing. That's the intent of that license. I'll make, make a motion, motion then to uh, authorize the mayor uh, for Lake Shores uh, to execute a license agreement regarding the use of uh, the Lee property. I second. All right. Motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Ms. Day for the mayor to enter into resolution to execute the license agreement regarding the property of the Lees. Uh, any further discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Having none, motion passes. Item D, consider procurement, uh, excuse me, consider procurement of electronic submission permitting and approval software with document storage for building department. Brent. Uh, thank you again. Um, this is, uh, we've, we've had on our uh, action item list internally in City Hall to look at uh, electronic record keeping, particularly for uh, the building department. They have, uh, they have the requirement that any of the commercial buildings, those drawings need to be retained indefinitely forever and ever. One of the things that we've learned is that we have a lot of records that were damaged, lost, and uh, were lost to storms through the years, particularly I think uh, Ike was the big one that that soaked a lot of records. So uh, one thing is to uh, to allow for us to capture those documents. We currently have them on the second floor of City Hall. However, a very strong brisk wind or tsunami that I've written about here recently in my mitigation worksheets uh, could affect that. So uh, historic uh, documentation is one thing. Also, uh, for uh, electronic submission and permitting and approvals. Um, other cities that are around us have gone to this. Um, they have much bigger uh, needs. For instance, League City is constantly growing, so they've, they've gone to an electronic uh, program, and it works very well. We think it can be scaled to our size, and it can be utilized for the, appli uh, the application process and the submission of that electronic document, they can submit electronic uh, drawings. Our city engineer, our fire marshal can be given access to certain points to do their approvals and make their comments. But the nice thing is that this can happen um, in the middle of the night, the middle of the morning, on a weekend when they're working. People can also submit those items at that time and then it's real-time reporting. So if they are linked to that record, uh, at least the one that I saw and got to play around with, if they're linked to that record and want text updates, as soon as something changes on that permit, they're immediately notified and they can log in and check that out. And the reason for, uh, and the reason for that is uh, we're just trying to make things less complicated and easier for people to use. Um, it's the direction we're moving. Also, uh, the uh, uh, really I'm, I lost my train of thought, but it has to do with uh, document storage. It's held in the held in a cloud uh, server farm, someplace off-site, so it's not here. Um, 
the um, one of the things that you need to consider and brought up for for a city council to look at is this is one of those decision is the decision point that once you go from paper and you go to electronic you're kind of going to stay on electronic then so I think we have a lot of good reasons to go electronic um, and it makes sense but it's not without some annual rec recurring costs we've identified some of them but as you get bigger you put more data up into the server you're paying more it's not a whole bunch of money but you know there are costs associated with it so uh, brought it to city council to have some uh, discussion and see if this is a good direction for the city and of course Kevin can speak uh, to any specifics on that and, and I think he can explain why it's important <coughs> one, one last thing we have budgeted money for this process we just probably haven't budgeted enough because it's it's getting a little bigger as we look at it if we're going to do if we're just going to scan documents and save them in the cloud um, we pretty much identified that cost but there is a cost associated with the permitting program and, and holding that data so uh, there may be a slight adjustment that's required for that but the uh, building department does a pretty good job of exceeding expectations every year with our growth so um, I, I don't think we're going to be in dire straits or anything uh, any questions? Not I'm so much. Go ahead. Yeah, um, we've gotten some preliminary quotes strictly just for scanning our plans. Uh, for the commercial and the residential that we have, uh, you're looking at about $11,000. The permitting software, excuse me, the permitting software, it ranges from about 18000 to 5000 depending on how detailed you want to go with the service. Uh, most of the services all provide a cloud service rather than a physical location at the city. Um, we've, we've used paper for so long, and if anyone has, has been in our office, you see a huge amount of files, and they're great for retention. They're great to answer questions. Um, our space is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and we're running out of room, honestly. Uh, permitting, we need to get out of the Stone Age. We need to start talking about digital. Everyone else is using the Internet to acquire their permits, inspections, so on and so forth. Even uh, when someone comes in and asking for files or, or information about a particular site or their home or something, they can go to the internet without coming to our office. It's a little bit more convenient for people. Um, we need to make this next step. This uh, so we need to make a motion before we go into more, more further discussion, please. I make a motion to consider procurement of the electronic submission permitting and approval software with documentation storage for the building permit. I'll second it. <coughs> motion by Ms. Lede, second by Mr. Fisher. Further discussion. Yes, I have a, question, a couple of questions I had. You mentioned the initial 11000 and possibly, I think you said for commercial, 18000 to 5000 Is that an uh, upfront fee or is that an annual <coughs> fee? Or? That is an up, depending on which program you go with, uh, typically they have an annual fee. It's averaging between five and $6,000 a year. Um, the upfront, free upfront fee varies because they offer different programs. It's one program just doesn't deal with permitting. Uh, it may have permitting. One hub is permitting. One hub is inspections. One hub is, is documents. Depending on how many you get depends on how expensive it is. Um, for right now, we're looking at strictly permitting, inspections, and data storage. Um, but they also get into code enforcement. They get into animal control. They get into a lot of things that we don't have right now. We could grow into that eventually, but I think... Theoretically, yes. And I'm surprised we haven't done it already because I wholeheartedly agree with the, uh, how cluttered you are, number one. Um, and I just want to get us a foot in the door. And I think it's a good idea to have redundancy. Uh, if all we have is a paper copy. Correct. That is a problem. Having a paper copy and always keeping it abreast of it, keeping it in, in the files. If it's online... 
It's there for anyone to look at it at any time. Would side go with it? How long do you think it would take to uh, get everything that we've got scanned and uh, uploaded uh, to get it uh, actually up, up and running? Um, like I said before, I've only gotten quotes to scan our current drawings. Uh, they talked about maybe about a month. Obviously, we'd still retain the physical copies until everything was in place. Uh, the permitting software, depending upon which company you talk to, it could be from two months to six months, depending on training and how in-depth the program is. So I know we have some money in the budget for it. How much do we have? That I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> it was about 11000 is what we had. Is what we but 11000 is what we budgeted for based on those in, on that first uh, that that first attempt at trying to get the uh, the records digitized and saved. Uh, we don't have a lot of specifics because we haven't really we kind of got into this. We looked at it from one thing, but it made sense to expand that scope um, to uh, assist the city, and uh, we have to go back and and identify those modules that we need. Um, and then uh, identify appropriate vendors, get quotes, and all of that. We haven't gone down that road. We've gotten kind of a high-level flyover quote for what we thought we needed, and uh, there's some more discussion that we need to take with them. So you guys are just going to bring it to its next meeting? Well, the purpose of this was to get buy-in from the council and then also realize that, it, like I said, it's a, dec it's a decision point. We're going from paper to digital. And so... Um, kind of one of those things once you step off and you go into that path you're not going to go back so it's a decision that will have far reaching uh, it'll have reach into the future but it's good reach yes mayor yeah so just to add to that are you done Ms. Lita? so just to add to that this is one one of my uh, things that I've been looking for for the city since becoming on council and mayor and uh, it's a huge efficiency I think for the building department um, once it's implemented getting there is going to be a a little bit of a road to get down but once we get there and there's several out there there's a lot to look at with other cities and talking to NASA Bay League City Dickinson and all those different entities I think um, right now what we're wanting to do is the, is the commitment from City Council because we've addressed this two years ago and there was some pushback and it didn't go forward and so it's a big commitment to make sure that we give direct what I'm looking for is direction to council I'm sorry council to the city and staff to say yes council wants to move forward with this and then now go off and find out the best plan and bring it back to council and present it and let just like looking at cars um, let the council decide which path to take underneath the advisement of the of the staff but it's a huge efficiency with Angie and and with uh, Kevin and getting everything into the cloud is one bit that's one phase you could do and then the second phase next year when more funds are available we can in, um, institute the electronic portion of the uh, permitting online and go on inspection it, it goes as far as he can take pictures and put them into the file uh, the, P the homeowner can look and see where their uh, files are at at any time and also see where their permits are at and then the people that are, are pulling the permits can request inspections and and find out what date and time that they're going to come out to do those inspections and stuff and then everything's recorded and maintained and then they have a RAID 6 system which is very you know storage heavy and, and making sure it's duplicated in multiple areas so it won't be lost. Once you make this decision yes those companies own the data so if we were to go with another company there could be additional cost if we go down a bad path. You need to, need to know that. Um, so, but I, th I think there's a lot of good research, and, and Kevin and Brent, and myself, have already looked at a lot of this stuff. I mean, I'm open to hearing more information about it. I don't know if that's what y'all are looking for. Yeah, just the uh, council's commitment to saying yes, go do this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, ev every other municipality around <laughs> is doing it. We're definitely it's stuck in the Stone Ages, Kevin. Kevin said it, it really is a good thing I mean, I've had only positive experiences dealing with it except aside from the city of Houston but that's a that's an issue of scale rather than anything else
cost of your permits are going to go up. Your builders aren't going to be happy. I don't set the fees. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying that's how we fund it per through permits. Your permits got to go up when you got to fund it. It is what it is. Any further discussion? And call a vote. I'd like to make a motion that we consider and secure quotes for the procurement of electronics submission permitting and approval software with document storage for the building department. I'll second it. All right. Motion by who? Huh? Oh, sorry. So, any further discussion? And then we'll so long. We'll call call a vote. Um, all in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. Having none, motion passed. Item E. Ordinance number 2022-02 and ordinance adopting amendment number two to the approval approved budget of the City of Clear Lake Shores, Texas for the fiscal year 22, increasing the amounts and expenditure accounts of the general fund due to unforeseen situations containing findings, providing for severability, and pr providing other details relating thereto. Mr. Spear. Hello, this is an administrative uh, function here. This is to allow us to spend the money to pay for Lowell Brown Fishing Pier. That was already approved by the council. Um, rainy day funds were the uh, funding mechanism for it, but we need the permission to write the check so hence this is the uh, the amendment uh, it's a budget amendment this has uh, been a long time in coming that I fully expected this to be about six or eight months ago so um, it got stretched out quite a bit due to uh, circumstances beyond our control or that of the actual contractor alright I make a motion that we uh Adopt ordinance 2022-02. Uh, Aye. Motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Mr. Day. Any discussion? Yeah, on the uh, paperwork you gave us here, you said the funding is for shell bottom boat ramp improvements. Uh, that's not correct. You can make an amendment to that. <coughs> The, uh, if you would wish to amend that on that notation, moving from uh, fund balance unrestricted to account number 113594, the amount of $91,000, the funding for shell bottom boat ramp improvements would be, would be scratched and replaced with funding for Lowell Brown Fishing Pier. And you can make that. Okay, I guess I'll amend the motion then to uh, make the change there to, uh, I guess it was 113594. Uh, change yes. that from uh, Shell Bottom Park to the uh, Low Brown Fishing Pier. Yes, sir. I second. All right. Am amendment to the motion, Mr. Fisher, second by Ms. Lede, amending the motion to address it being Low Brown Fishing Pier. Any further discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. Any opposed, nay? Having none, motion passed. Uh, item F, executive session pursuant to section 551.72 authorizes governmental body to deliberate and execute executive session. On certain matters concerning real property, a governmental body may conduct a closed meeting to deliberate the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if deliberation and open meeting would have detrimental effect on the position of the governmental body in negotiation with the third person. For consideration of special warranty deed of abstract 18M Mundul, Mundoon survey lot 795 and 796 Clear Lake Shores known as 627 Clear Lake Road, Clear Lake Shores, Texas. And that happens to be where the gardens are and the old fire station used to be. Uh, next is uh, 
Item G, executive session, the government body may conduct an executive session to discuss matters dealing with individual officers and employees, specifically the exception allows government bodies to deliberate the appointment, uh, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties and discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, City Administrator Brent Spear, Police Chief Tracy Keel, Building Official Kevin Harrell, and City Secretary Christy Strupp. Recess.